Audiophiles love amplifiers. I mean, the market is flooded with them. Everything from tubes to solid state, class A, A, B, D, H, L, M, N, O, P. Okay, those last few were a joke. Every day, it seems like a new amp hits the market, and many are class D, with prices starting below 100 bucks, with claims of power that used to cost customers thousands of dollars, if not, tens of thousands. We've looked at more than a few of these ultra affordable amplifiers and realized that it's one thing for an amp to test well on a bench, but it's a lot harder for them to live up to the manufacturer's claims, you know, in the real world. That doesn't mean I've given up hope on finding a more affordable class D stereo amplifier that can live up to its marketing hype. Take Ever Solo, a brand widely known for its DAC and streaming components, has entered the Class D amp race with their Amp F2 stereo amplifier, which done in collaboration with audio manufacturer Stark Sound. The F2 utilizes Stark's NS600 amplifier module, producing a reported 145 watts per channel into 8 ohms and 250 watts into 4. The F2 can be switched into a bridge mode, turning it into a mono or single channel amplifier, which increases the power to 280 watts into 4 ohms and a rather impressive 450 watts into 2. The F2 is very well built, encased in an all aluminum chassis with a design language that's more reminiscent of Stark sound than, say, ever solo. Look closely, and you'll notice that the F2 looks looks a lot like a half-width Fiera 4 from Stark. I think Eversolo missed a golden opportunity to include one of their color displays here, which would have given the F2 the ability to showcase real-time amplifier data, or better yet, meters. Round back, you're gonna find a pair of high-quality beryllium binding posts, as well as RCA and XLR-style inputs, which you select using a small toggle switch. The F2 has a detachable power cord and a few trigger ports, but that's about it. Everything is very neatly laid out and very clearly labeled, making setup really easy. Now, because this is strictly a review of the amplifier, limiting the variables in my setup was a priority. I focused mainly on two pairs of reference speakers, Q Acoustics Concept 50s and the Cornwall 4s from Klipsch. Now, I threw in the Revel M16s briefly on the Ever Solo in order to confirm my suspicions about how the F2 performs with metal dome tweeters. But other than that, the rest of the system remained constant, relying on my reference DAC, preamp, and streamer, the A8 from Ever Solo, and our Apple TV 4K which plays back a variety of streaming services, including movies, through our 98-inch Sony X90L TV using the A8's HDMI ARC EARC connection. The speakers were positioned to produce the most linear response possible, which I confirmed through in-room measurements. No equalization, room correction, tone controls, or even balance were used during the F2's evaluation, which kept the potential for outside interference to an absolute minimum. Now, Ever Solo or Stark would have you believe that tonally, this is a warm sounding amplifier. It's not. The F2 is neutral, and I mean neutral in a very Class D sort of way. There is not a great deal of character or coloration in its overall tone. If you're looking for a small footprint Class D amp and were excited by the reports of the F2's warmer, more analog-like sound, or you've drank all the Kool-Aid and you're expecting to hear Class D masquerading as a tube amp or even Class AB, you might want to pump the brakes. Now, that's not a bad thing. After all, an amplifier's sole job is to simply amplify the incoming signal to your loudspeaker, so it should be colorless. Any perceivable character is likely the result of distortion. I'm not saying that distortion can't be welcomed or even sound good to some of you, but in most cases, it's something you're going to want to avoid. Does that mean that we should just end the review and skip the F2? Well, not so fast. At volumes between 50 to 75 dB, the F2 sounds good. It may even be indistinguishable from amps costing up to several hundred dollars more, like Emotiva's XPA series. So if you're in a smaller room, or maybe you're looking for a desktop solution, this is an amp to consider. Now, as you turn up the volume, the conversation begins to change. If you own speakers with more excitable tweeters, listen up. At higher volumes, you may notice the F2 begin to skew more towards the treble. This skew towards the treble was not an issue on our Concept 50s, even when listening at higher volumes. However, when I brought out our Clipped Cornwall 4s and I pushed them to concert-like levels, I'm talking volumes of 90 dB and higher, that treble spike, it's noticeable. As volume increases, there is an injection of treble energy, and you can see it in the loudspeaker's near-field response. I wouldn't say the increase in treble energy is overwhelming, but if you're as sensitive to high frequencies as I am, like other budget-friendly Class D amps, the F2 has not solved the treble issue. Now, as a near-field or desktop solution, 
solution, I would pair the Ever Solo with speakers with known roll off in the highs, or even better, with speakers that use soft dome tweeter materials. You, you don't have to worry much about speaker sensitivity, at least not in my experience. The F2 has enough real world grunt to drive even difficult speakers comfortably. But <laughs> the F2 is not completely silent. So if you're thinking about pairing this amp with a highly sensitive speaker, think, you know, Klipsch, and you listen in the near field, you may notice some noise in the form of tweeter hiss. When I was about three feet from our corn walls, I could hear it. Beyond three feet, the hiss is not audible. So just know your listening location before making any final decisions. Aside from knowing your listening habits and speaker considerations in advance, the F2, again, is a neutral leaning amp. The amp did not alter the response or sound of our test speakers aside from the aforementioned treble when listening at everyday volumes. Now, compared to other amplifiers like Emotiva's Basics A2, Crown's 1002 XLS Drivecore 2, and the much costlier Primair, I did feel I needed to increase the volume a little bit more on the Ever Solo, but this is really easily explained by the F2's slightly lower gain. Nothing to get too worked up over. I doubt it will be a problem for the majority of listeners. I'm I mean, maybe for Carl. Carl's going to run into an issue, but everyone else, you should be just fine. The F2's mid-range clarity, intelligibility, bass texture, definition, and control are all very solid. The amp maintains good separation and delineation between the speakers and even beyond. Dispersion was not affected by the F2. Now, soundstage depth will always be room and setup dependent, but the F2 doesn't appear to flatten the stage like other less expensive Class D amps have in the past. Overall, the sound started in relative alignment with the speaker's front baffles and extended backward and never really projected forward unless I was listening at volumes greater than, say, 100 dB, which, admittedly, I didn't do for longer than about 30 seconds, as that's just insanely loud, in my opinion. Driver control and dynamics proved impressive once volumes reached 50 to 55 dB. Below that, the F2 wasn't really able to flex all that hard, but to be fair, not many amps are gonna wow you at lower volumes. Again, between 50 dB and 75 dB, the F2's at its best. Like a lot of men, my hair started to thin a lot earlier than I expected. I didn't realize just how much I needed help until I started this channel a few years ago. Viewers will definitely let you know if anything is off, but thanks to Keeps, I feel more confident now when I'm on camera. I've been able to treat my thinning hair and even stimulate new hair growth without ever having to leave my home. With Keeps subscription-based service, you get FDA-approved treatment products along with shampoos and conditioners that keep your hair looking thicker and healthier and all at a price you can afford. Plus, there are no time-consuming doctor or pharmacy visits. Keeps makes it easy to speak with a professional online, and then your order is shipped discreetly right to your door. To date, Keeps has helped nearly one million men keep their hair. Hair loss stops with Keeps. To get your special offer, go to keeps.com forward slash Andrew Robinson, or just click the link in the description and try it for yourself. Thanks to Keeps for sponsoring this video. Now, back to the review. I tried to keep my comparisons in line with the F2's power and general asking price, focusing on amps like Emotiva's Basics A2, the Crown XLS 1002 Drivecore 2, both of which actually cost less than the Eversolo's $799 asking price. For a more upmarket benchmark, I relied on the Primair A35.2. I mean, why not? But first, compared to TI-based chip amps I have on hand, the F2 is the better amp for me and my needs. The F2 did not struggle to drive any of our loudspeakers in room at louder levels, nor did it have issues with complex source material, whether I was listening to music or watching movies. The Ever Solo is more versatile and more sonically reliable than the amps I've tested from WIM, Fosse, SMSL, or Relic, you get the idea, at least so far. I put the F2 through the same tests on the same speakers in the same room at the same volumes, and it never faltered. Moving on to the equally powerful Emotiva Basics A2. If you're listening at volumes between 50 and 75 dB in room, I doubt you'll be able to tell the Emotiva and the Ever Solo apart aside from maybe, maybe, the impression that the Basics has a little bit more weight in the mid bass and bass. But understand, this difference is likely psychoacoustic. Both amps, when playing back sweeps 
at 75 dB in room produced the exact same response up into about 10 kilohertz. At 10 kilohertz, the F2 ramps up a little bit more. However, the Emotiva has better dynamics and control sooner. In other words, it's better at low volumes thanks to its higher gain. If I really turn things up, the Emotiva sound doesn't skew towards the treble on either test speaker as it did with the F2. The F2's build quality and feature set are better and more flexible than the Emotiva. But having said that, I believe the Base X is the safer buy. It's not that these two amps sound like radically different, but the Emotiva is more predictable across all volumes, and it just gives me the confidence in its performance long term. I still have not found an amplifier with better overall value in all of Hi-Fi than the Crown XLS DriveCore series. Minus its, you know, dance club style looks and a noticeable noise floor, you are not gonna find a more ready to please powerhouse of an amp at such a low price than what Crown delivers. When it comes to sound quality, there isn't much difference between the F2 and the Crown when played back at everyday volumes. The Crown sounds a little softer and not quite as etched detail wise, but that's me digging real deep to try and describe what are really minuscule differences. Turn the volume way up and the crown is more composed top to bottom, but its noise floor is also more audible. I still love the crown and consider it to be ever solo's equal. One thing is for certain, the Crown is definitely the better value. Now, if you're looking for a compact desktop solution, the F2 is more than enough and may even border on overkill. I consider it a better long-term option over the Wim amp, but that's all the airtime I'm given that product. Y'all know I love comparing products regardless of their price point, so it's no surprise I put the costlier Primair A35.2 into the rotation. Now, the F2 is not outright embarrassed by an amp like the Primair, but it's important to keep things rooted in reality before we start jumping to headlines like giant killer. Like the Emotiva, the A35.2 has higher gain, making it better at low, low volumes. When listening at moderate volumes, I'm talking roughly 55 dB in room, the Primair isn't crazy different from the F2 but feed it a beefier speaker, turn things up, and the delta gets wider than Moses parting the Red Sea. When playing back well-recorded music at levels of 75 dB and higher, the F2 is completely outclassed. The Primair is better composed, more controlled, and more linear in its response compared to any of the amps we've discussed today. Going back to knowing your listening space and habits, if you're not going to tax an amp, meaning you're going to sit closer to your speakers, for example, you're at a desk or in a small room using speakers that will never be asked to play back full range, complex music at reference level, you can definitely get by with an amp like the Ever Solo. And like I said, I would choose the F2 over TI amps I've mentioned. If this type of listening represents the totality of your hi-fi experience, it's not gonna be difficult for many products to appear more or less impressive. But if you're further along in your hi-fi journey or you're seeing how fast you can damage your hearing like Carl does, and especially if you put the hammer down in a space like ours, the difference between cheap and higher end gear become very apparent. The adage, you get what you pay for, that didn't stop being true in 2024. If you want reliable results at all volumes, in all spaces, and with all types of speakers, you're gonna need to budget for that kind of performance. The F2 from Ever Solo is a very good amplifier, superior to many of its lower cost Class D peers, and even comparable to several Class AB amps that skew more towards the budget side of the spectrum. But is it the newest end-all be-all giant killer ready to lead the battle against traditional hi-fi that some of you may be hoping for? It's not, but that doesn't mean it's not impressive or that the new kids aren't getting really close. In the right situation, the Ever Solo will be a great solution. It's just not the solution. So that's it. That is it for me and my review of Ever Solo's new F2 stereo amplifier. Time to tell me what you think. And if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Go ahead and ring that bell so that you're notified when new videos come out. If you use any of the links that Christy's left for you down below, know that that's a great way that you've continued to show your support for this channel and the work that we do here. And both of us, thank you very much for doing that. Speaking of Christy, you know where you're going to find her opinion on the Ever Solo. Tune in Friday for our new 
Unplugged. And in the meantime, if you want more behind the scenes action, follow me on Instagram at Recovering Audiophile. And that is it for us today. So remember, the only person who has to like the sound of your system is you. So happy listening, everybody. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye.